you. Thank you. My name is Dean Reuter. I'm General Counsel and Vice President of the Federalist Society. Thank you all for being here. And a special welcome to those of you joining us uh, on our live stream or on C-SPAN. Welcome back or welcome to the Federal Society's first annual Legislative Branch Review Conference. A quick housekeeping note, uh, recordings of the entire conference are, uh, even those parts that haven't been live streamed or on C-SPAN uh, are available on the Federal Society's website. So if you like what you see here, uh, please visit our website, learn more about the Article I initiative and, and watch the rest of the conference. That aside, it is my honor uh, to introduce the speaker for today's afternoon address, Senator Lindsey, Lindsey Graham. I'm going to be very brief in the interest of time. Uh, Senator Graham has represented South Carolina in the U.S. Senate since 2002. Uh, prior to serving in the Senate, he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1994 as the first Republican from the 3rd Congressional District of South Carolina in over 100 years. Uh, before his election to, conference, to Congress, he served as a Judge Advocate General in the U.S. Air Force and later in the South Carolina Air National Guard and the Air Force Reserves. Just weeks ago, Senator Graham was elected to serve as the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, a committee with broad legislative jurisdiction and oversight of the Departments of Justice and Homeland Security. The Judiciary Committee is, of course, also tasked with the consideration of all Article III judicial nominations, including nominees to the Supreme Court. Uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee managed a historically blistering pace in judicial confirmations over the past 24 months under Senator Grassley, uh, so Senator Graham inherits a fair amount of momentum in that part of the committee's work. Indeed, Senator Graham has pledged that confirmation of judges will be one of his top priorities as chairman of the committee. So I'm very excited to hear his thoughts today at our Legislative Branch Review Conference about whether the Senate and Congress are hitting the mark, what they can, might do differently or better, and what the road forward looks like. So with that, please join me in welcoming Senator Lindsey Graham. Thank you all. Thank you. Please. Thank you. I'm sorry I, I'm late. I was talking to the Turkish president about Syria, so this is a complicated world we live in. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. How do you get to be chairman? You live long enough and you keep getting reelected. <laughs> it's not a merit-based deal, but I'll try to do the best I can. I want to uh, acknowledge Senator Grassley's tenure as chairman. I thought he did a very good job. Uh, the committee worked pretty well, had some bumps in the road. And let's just get right into it. You know, what do I see happening on the committee? Judges, more judges, and hopefully some uh, legislative breakthroughs on things that we need to do as a country. Uh, about picking judges. Uh, I've been here since 2002. I've had six votes for Supreme Court nominees. I voted for them all. I thought Kagan and Sotomayor were qualified. I wouldn't have chosen them. But it was pretty clear to me they were qualified and somebody uh, that they represent people that a Democratic president would pick from. As to the four nominated uh, on the Republican side, I found them equally qualified. I person that a Republican president would choose from, which takes us to the Federalist Society. <laughs> You're organized around the idea of constitutional prim principles of, that I share, and it should not be news that when a Republican president wins, that you would be the type of people they would talk to about who would be a good person uh, from our philosophy point of view. Where do you think the Democrats go? Who do you think they talk to? They just don't pick somebody out of the phone book. They have their constituencies that monitor judges, people that they feel are rising stars in terms of the more liberal judicial philosophy. So that's the way it works. I keep trying to tell everybody elections matter. But I'm afraid we're in a uh, dark period now. That elections, uh, when it comes to judges, never end that the rules have changed against my will. I was in the gang of 14 that stopped the filibuster during the Bush years to say we should only filibuster judges in extraordinary circumstances. So the politics of judges uh, is ever increasing and eventually is going to hurt the judiciary. 
you ask me what I worry the most about. In the future, it's going to be very hard to find somebody to come forward if we keep doing what we're doing. Brett Kavanaugh, thank you for sticking with him. Thank you for understanding he was highly qualified from our point of view. And what Brett went through was unconscionable, and I hope it never happens again. Because at the end of the day, any Republican president would put Brett on the top of their list. Hands down, without question, qualified. He was a Bush guy, not a Trump guy. Worked with President Bush. He was his private secretary. He handled every piece of paper that came across President Bush's desk. He had been in the trenches and as judging and lawyering without any hesitation is just as qualified as Sotomayor and Kagan. Without any doubt, exactly who you'd expect a Republican president to pick. And look what happened to him. The goal was to hold open the seat to 2020. Well, that didn't work. So in 2013, Harry Reid decided to change the rules to require a majority vote for circuit court judges. I remember Senator Schumer called me up the night before and said, we're going to change the rules, and I couldn't understand why, because there were very few judges waiting. Well, it was a power grab, and it's over time going to change the judiciary. And I worry a lot about what's coming. If you don't have to reach across the aisle to get any votes, judges are going to be just more ideological than they would be otherwise. So it's incumbent upon us to make sure that when we put somebody forward, they really do represent the rule of law from a constitutionally conservative point of view, not some ideologue with an agenda. That's what I like about you. You don't want that ideologue right or left. So it's going to put pressure on all of us within our parties to make sure that we do the vetting and we put somebody who represents our philosophy forward but does understand the role of a judge in the rule of law. So we're going to do 41, I think, tomorrow that are holdovers. We're going to have more hearings and more votes, and all we need is a majority. I'm hoping that one day, somehow, one of these high-profile nominees will get some votes from the other side. If Bill Barr can't find a vote from the Democratic side, I don't know who can. So we are where we are, and there's no use blaming anybody. Let's just press on and try to make the best of it. The rule of law means to me <clears throat> that you don't have to have a militia to get your way. Most places in the Mideast that have a hard time moving forward have a big problem. Nobody trusts the cops. Nobody trusts the judges. They act in a very limited way, and most people feel the only way you can represent your interests is through armed groups. Imagine what America would be like if we did not trust the courtroom. We may not like the outcome, but look at uh, Bush v. Gore. A split decision in the Supreme Court and power was transferred peacefully. That is worth protecting. So what am I going to do as Judiciary Chairman? I'm going to make sure that we can appoint as many well-qualified conservatives on Trump's watch as possible, and the key is well-qualified. I will not let the ABA veto what happens, but I do care about what they think. When it comes to judges, younger, is better than older. When it comes to judges, well-qualified is better than not well-qualified. I have been a lawyer most of my adult life, and in every state, there are people we can find that are well-qualified and that can serve for a while. Pay. If you're in your 40s, early 50s, doing pretty well in the private sector. We ask you to leave that practice with a couple of kids going to college or about to go to college. We gotta think about pay. Used to be 
that two out of three judicial nominees came from the private sector and one in three came from the public sector. The French model is pretty much, it's a career path to be a judge. Very few people come from the private sector. And there are great government lawyers out there. But the strength of our judiciary over time has been, in my view, the best and brightest in the private sector will leave the private sector to serve publicly, to be a judge. Pay does matter. So I've been talking to Justice Roberts, I'm going to talk to Senator Feinstein, to make sure that we have a package of uh, pay and benefits that will allow people to make the transition from the private sector <clears throat> to the public sector, expecting some sacrifice, but it's got to be financially doable. The rule of law is worth investing in. When you look at all the money we spend on judges, on prosecutors, on public defenders, the entire ball of wax is probably less than 1% of the entire budget. We need to think about access to justice. We need to make sure that there are prosecutors out there in sufficient numbers, that there are immigration judges in sufficient numbers to make sure the rule of law works, that public defenders are there in sufficient numbers and quality to make people believe they're going to get a fair shake regardless of their income. I like my job as a United States Senator. I love the law. It's the one thing we have going for us that over time makes us really different. Buying into this idea is not where you come from, it's not how much you make, it's not the group you belong to that determines your fate, but the quality of the evidence. And all these presumptions over the last 200 years have served us well. So what do I want to do? I want to populate the judiciary with well-qualified conservative judges in a reasonable manner. I want to make sure that those who go into this profession are compensated in a fashion they're enticed to do so in the future. Legislatively, I want to deal with the social media behemoth on privacy, on content, on how you protect these platforms from being hijacked by foreign governments and terrorists. This is a completely new area of life. All these social media outlets have enriched our lives, but they're also created problems. I do want to take another shot at a broken immigration system. What do I worry about the most? Syria, yes, but a cyber attack more than anything else. We don't have the infrastructure we need in place to protect our critical infrastructure from what I think is an inevitable attack. You'll never regulate this problem. So working with Senator Whitehouse, what do I want to do? I want to create incentives for people in the power business, the financial services business, other areas of critical, critical infrastructure, including elections, to harden their infrastructure to the best business practices available, make sure, audit them to make sure they achieve those best business practices, they actually invest money, and if they meet those standards to give them liability protection. That's the only way this is gonna work. DHS cannot regulate these industries because the threats change so quickly. To the Federalist Society, thank you for your input. You've got my phone number, I've got yours. But we need to be thinking about protecting and preserving the rule of law, not just our people versus theirs. What I've seen in the last couple of years really, really bothers me. So we've got to find some way to have a truce here, to reset, because if we don't, I really do worry about the quality of an independent judiciary. In my business, it's all about loud. 50 plus one. No matter how you get there, as long as you get there. In your business, the rule of law business, it is about 
a quiet place where people can evaluate without the pressure of the next election to get the right outcome for their fellow citizens. So what will I do as Judiciary Chairman? I'm going to do everything I can to solve the problems that face our country in new and novel ways, but dedicate my time to preserving the rule of law, protecting those who will come forward to serve, paying them adequately, and ensuring that we get the best and the brightest. The thing about our profession is people take it for granted until they need it. Every lawyer in here has been the butt of a joke until you need one. God bless you. Thank you, Senator Graham. We are going to continue with our next panel without a break. If we could call the panelists forward, please.